Hello and welcome back once again to the Pro Tipster Football Show. We're back once again with the ill behaviour. We've got a mighty podcast lined up for you today. We've got Jose Mourinho rolling out the bus for Pep Guardiola. Jurgen Klopp welcomes Big Sam's Everton to Anfield. And we have the top 10 most hated men in football. Joining me in studio today, we have Pro Tipster Martin and Pro Tipster Dan. And we're going to find you some great value in the football markets. Martin, you're very welcome to Poland. Thanks very much. Nice to have to be here. Good. Like a guest. <laughs> Dan, how are you? D for damager, my friend. D for <laughs> damager. <laughs> oh, I hope you've picked up on the challenge. Dan challenged me a couple of days ago to see if I could uh, put a musical reference into every intro. So, challenge has been accepted. And I think I'm doing all right so far. Yeah, powerful Good. people. Right then, let's have a look. Look, before we get into the meat and bones of the football then, just a little reminder, if you have any betting questions, hit us up on social media. You can get me at Pro Tipster IRL or you can get us on Facebook, Pro Tipster UK. These podcasts are available on iTunes and Android Podcatchers. Yeah, that's a word. I learned that one today. And we're also on the Pro Tipster blog site. Let's get in then to the matches. Let's start off with you, Dan, uh, because I know you're sick of talking about West Ham, Martin. Uh, West Ham mm-hmm. in 19th versus Chelsea in third. Um, yeah, I, I'd be sick of talking to West Ham if I was in West Ham <laughs> as well. Um, I, it's hard to say anything about Chelsea win, isn't it? Um, you know, watching them uh, in midweek, they they did pretty well. Uh, I was intrigued by Mitchy Watchway, you know. One day he's playing in the Champions League, the next he's playing the Czech Trade Trophy. What a come down that was. The I glamour. If he, uh, the glamour. Oh, I wonder if he annoyed Antonio Conte or something, <laughs> you know, falling asleep during the game. <laughs> um, I think the big question is, Hart, and this one for you, Hart or Adrian? Me, for me personally, um, it'll be Adrian. However, I think David Moyes will stick Hart back in goal. You think he will, yeah? Yeah, I mean, Joe Hart didn't play, obviously, because it's, it's, it's his parent club city, but, Adrian had a great game. However, I don't know. Just Moyes is thinking. I, I, I think a lot of fans. Apologies for my voice, by the way. I lost it last week. But um, a lot of the fans want to see Adrian in goal, and Joe Hart makes a lot of errors. I think statistically as well, it's shown that Joe Hart make, is prone to a lot of errors and mistakes. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to see Adrian in goal, but I, I don't think it'll happen. Wasn't it David James used to blame it on PlayStation? Did he? Yeah, 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 that was it. Yeah, yeah, I can remember he said, oh, you played him with PlayStation. Yeah, alright. <laughs> Big weirdo. That's wow. what he used to say. Yeah. Um, so you're going with a, with a Chelsea win or are you taking him on a um, handicap, Dan? I, I don't know. So I, I, I've got this thing about betting it on West, West Ham because they keep stitching me up. <laughs> um, I looked at the handicap. I think the line's about one. So, um, West Ham plus one is 2.09. Minus, Chelsea minus one is 1.75. And can't see much value in that. It's, what it comes down to is, was, are West Ham going to rock up like they did against Man City and, you know, play really well and up yeah. their game, or are they going to fall apart? I don't know. Of course. Well, look, watching, watching, them, watching them against City, Martin, you must have been, yeah. you must have been pretty happy. Like. They oh, yeah, I was right. happy. Yeah, yeah, I was happy. My mate actually texted me saying, oh, congratulations on the 1-0 win. I was like, it's not finished yet. <laughs> um, and then, obviously, we went on a loss. But away from home, we seem to up our game. It's at home we've got a problem at yeah. the moment. Like, it's not a fortress, and... Um, anyone thinking that West Ham might win this game, um, I just can't see it in the London Stadium. We, Chelsea are so good, and I, I can I can see it now. Chelsea will get an early goal, we'll fall apart and lose three or four. It's it's going to happen. Um, it's not a happy place, is it, the London Stadium? It's not a happy place. I mean, to be fair, against Leicester, uh, the last game at the London Stadium, the atmosphere was good in the second half, really, really good. And David Moyes had come out and said he's never heard an atmosphere like it. So did Marco Arnautovic. Um, so if we can produce that kind of atmosphere again, we might have a chance. But Chel- you look at the two sides, Chelsea are just on another level at the moment, and Hazard's coming into form at just the wrong time for us. You got a load of injuries too, ain't you? Yeah, we have got. We played Declan Rice, an 18-year-old centre back, against City. He had a really good game, to be honest, and wouldn't surprise me if he played again. Um, Hernandez is coming back. I'd love to see him play, but I, I think he's still got a little bit of a niggle. He's back in training though, but I think his game will come too soon for him. Um, so it could be Antonio up front on his own again. I um, saw I saw a tweet about and because Andy Carroll's injured, isn't he? Thank God. I saw a tweet <laughs> about Andy Carroll saying like he was gutted to be injured, but he's still a fifteen to twenty goal a season man. I'm like, 
What are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked on um, I looked on knees up, Mother Brown, and that was basically oh, yeah. the response. What are you smoking, man? <laughs> and and someone came up with a stat, and I don't know if this is true, so I didn't have a chance to check it out. That he's managed to be banned or injured every single December the last five seasons. Nice. Wow. So obviously, nice. he obviously true. likes his Christmas holidays. <laughs> <laughs> what a hero! I like that. That's good. Well done, Andy. Um, However, so we have. They've only beaten us, won three of the last six. Um, we won three of the last six when they've come to visit us. So, it maybe it's something about them travelling to London clubs. And that, I don't think Conte's got a good record against um, in London derbies. So, you know, if we if we come out quickly, we we've, we've got a chance. We need so, to score first. I saw West Ham are two point three two to be relegated. I think that was on the on on, on Betfair. That's that's pretty grim. Yeah, it is grim reading. Um, was that with Paddy Power though, who have paid out on Man City? Paid out on the City already, yeah. Like Hillary, like well, they paid out on Man United a couple of times as well, didn't they? It, it's a good, it's a good marketing thing because it gets people, gets more customers. But that's all it is, really. Mm. You know, like I, I presume if you put a bet on on City to win last week, they wouldn't be paying out this week. No, no, every uh, every bet, um, certain conditions, mm. but basically single bets paid uh, uh, that were placed up to December the sixth have been paid out. Up to well, December 6th, up to yesterday. Yeah. And paid out today. Yeah. You wouldn't oh. have got good odds there. Yes, oh, no, no, of course not. But they probably would have limited you to like 5p. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, we didn't actually start with the biggest one, but we'll, we'll come up to it. Uh, another match we wanted to talk about was uh, Newcastle and 15th are taking on Leicester in ninth. Um, I, the only thing I could find interesting about this, Newcastle have conceded first in four out of seven home matches, and Leicester have scored first. In seven out of eleven away ones. Now, in the video earlier today, we spoke a little bit about, about this. Protest Sudan had written a very good article about Rafa Benitez and his frustration. Yes. Um, we'll start with you, Martin. Do you what do you see happening in this one? Um, I'm actually going for a Leicester win. I just don't think Newcastle are in a good space at the moment, both on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, like Dan's mentioned in his article, um, with the Rafa Benitez stuff, um, the ownership of the club at the moment is just. Um, causing some problems on, on the pitch, I think. And, you know, Newcastle are just looking at the form table, absolutely terrible at the moment, bottom, hit bottom of the form table in the last six matches, drawn one, lost five. I look at the head to head between Newcastle and Leicester. Leicester have won the last four in a row. Um, and I was very impressed when Leicester come to the London Stadium to play West Ham. I was very, very impressed with Mahrez and Vardy. And I think they're like very, very haircut, yeah. <laughs> I think they're very, very happy under Puel. Um, they're playing in harmony with each other again, and the results are coming. And I can't see Newcastle getting anything. Do you think Mares has benefited by being pushed up top? Massively, massively. He didn't seem happy when he was like a little bit deeper on the wing. Um, but yeah, up top, more playing alongside Vardy and just off him. And he's, he's, he's a given, lot happier. He's given him a chance to play Demari Gray more as well, which I think has been a big thing. I really like Demari Gray. You do, obviously, as well. Being a he's an ex-Birmingham boy. Um, glad he's got his chance. And yeah, Leicester seems to be playing good football again. I just don't think. I, I just don't see where Newcastle are going to get any goals from at the moment. Um, New, actually, I, when I wrote that article, I, 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 I checked out some stats. Mm. And Newcastle, like um, they 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 do really well for shots. Um, in the Premier League stats, they're eighth uh, ranked eighth for shots per game at twelve point seven. They ranked seven for shots on target uh, with 4.4, but their problem, their huge problem is dispossession. It's where, um, this is a stat where players lose the ball, not after dribbling, but like get caught in possession. 11.6 per game, which is fourth worst in the Premier League. So whilst, when they get the ball and get the ball forward so mm. they can score, holding onto the ball is a real problem for them. And I think that's where the issue lies. Um, Shelby. Shelby, yeah, that's Shelby. what it is. He just loses the ball all the time. Like, I, I used to really like Shelby. I still yeah. have a soft spot for him, but uh, he makes, makes too many mistakes. That, exactly, we have the same haircuts. <laughs> but, yeah. But Le- Le- <laughs> Wes Morgan, who's skipper, who should play for England, copyright Harry Redknapp. Um, <laughs> Wes Morgan was saying, under Claude Puel, the team has changed. And he said mm. it's been small steps because you can't change too much too quickly. But that Puel has been trying to get them to focus on retaining possession for longer and being more accurate with their passing. Now, I pulled the stats for this as well, and I can understand why, because currently, and this includes the whole season, 
Leicester City are ranked 17th for possession percentage in the Premier League and they're 20th for pass accuracy. Possession's not too bad. I didn't win the league. With... Yeah, possession I think is overrated, but pass accuracy... Yeah. I, I, I think <laughs> Such a football hipster thing to say. No, Possession's no. overrated. Man. No, I, I'm <laughs> sorry, but as a Birmingham City fan... <laughs> under, no, no, this, this is the God's honest truth. Ga- under Gary Rowett, we were a counter-attacking side that averaged 30-40% possession a game. Yeah. Since Rowett has gone, we have won seven games. <laughs> seven oh. league games. And we've, we've dominated possession, but we can't do anything with it. Yeah. You know, you look, you watch our game with Wolves. For 20 minutes, we, we were massively on top. Didn't have a shot on goal. Couldn't have a shot. Yeah, I was watching it. It was frustrating as hell. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Possession doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You're just knocking it around the back four. Yeah. And you just, um, I believe the, uh, the threat, this is really hipster now. <laughs> cordon, cordon sanitaire. It's like a D around the, 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 the goal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what, what you do as defence is you don't allow players with the ball inside that D. So it, it kind of stretches from just outside the 18 yard box, kind of like in a D shape around. So you let them like towards the corner flag, so you can't do much from there, and you keep them like 20, 25 yards away from goal. If you got the ball there and you're be- and you're behind the ball, who cares? Same. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing. Possession, I think, is slightly overrated. I think, I think you've got to have the ball sometimes, but I've gone for the draw in this anyway, because um, as much as I think Leicester are decent away from home, Newcastle do draw a lot of games and. How long do you think the Newcastle fans are going to? How long do you think they're going to wait before they turn on Rafa? Because they're always angry with the board. I don't think they'll. I, I don't think, think they will. I, th- no. I think with the same like West Ham fans, I think didn't really turn on Slavin Bilic. No. The because owners. yeah, the, just the owners. Yeah, yeah, and and everyone hates Mike Ashley. Mm. What was he? Fourteenth in the uh, most hated football. Yeah, coming up <laughs> later. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, I mean, I hate Mike Ashley. You know, I, I kind of admire a guy who. Halfway into a business meeting, has fifteen points and pukes into a fireplace. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I've been there. Yeah, we've all been there. Like, but, um, <laughs> no, I, I understand their frustrations, and they've got this this takeover going on, and it, it's going to drag on into January, which mm. means it's going to mess up their transfer window. And and Rafa's had enough. You know, he didn't didn't get what he wanted in the summer, and I could see him just going to screw this. And then who they're going to bring in? Alan Shearer. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the worst Premier League <laughs> managerial record, isn't it? The worst Premier League uh, managerial record for any guy named Alan, that's for sure. <laughs> that's an actual <laughs> stat. It is. He's yeah. eight with 12.5% Brilliant. win ratio. All right, so we'll move on then to the Liverpool uh, derby. So Liverpool in fourth Thanks are for taking on to Everton the in tenth. Now, I was saying to Dan in, in the video earlier that you can earn money you know, Big Sam, he can't really lose here because if they go and get trounced, which sure Liverpool are so good, it doesn't tips. stop them. If he manages a, a win or if he manages details. a draw, they're not going to win. If they manage a draw, then he's a, he's a footballing genius. So, you know, Sam's laughing here. Mm-hmm. He is. Mm-hmm. He's laughing at home because... He's not in Cyprus, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, doctor's <laughs> night. Yeah, it's hard. Like he said, he wanted to focus on the first team. Um, in one interview, and then in another interview, he said he had a medical note. I'm yeah, sure I think I, th- I think I think the medical note is for the benefit of UEFA, because um, ah. UEFA, um, UEFA only only say you know you don't have to be there if you've got a medical problem. So um, he's because like you've got to protect the integrity of the competition. You know, him saying mm. I want to be with the first team, and the first team aren't in the competition. UA for ink and I like that so That's true. Oh, I've got a sick note. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But no, I agree. So I think it's win win for Allardyce. Um unless they get absolutely trounced. Then it might be problems. I'm I'm saying nothing. The last two times I've said Liverpool won't score, they've scored seven, <laughs> so I'm saying nothing. <laughs> it's the first time I read a stat, it's the first time they've beaten a club seven nil home and away in a season um since eighteen ninety two, the year they were formed. Wow. Oh, that's a mad stat. Oh, it's a great. I know. One. I know that they now hold the record for the most Champions League goals in the group stage by an English club for twenty three. Let's get going. Yeah, Firmino had some record as well, but I don't remember what it was. So and Coutinho scored the first hat trick in a Champions League uh, match by a Liverpool player since Yossi Benayoun against Besiktas in two thousand and seven. What a legend! Did he really get that hat trick with that deflection, or was that was that on target? Hmm. 
Yeah, I, I didn't think it was his, but... No, I think he got it, yeah. He was credited with it anyway. Yeah. The big thing for Liverpool, I mean, again, we keep talking about their defence, but Marino mm. got subbed off, apparently was in tears. But um, is that... You were saying just before we went on, like, before we start recording that, is that a big loss? Milner came on, three assists, second half. Yeah, I think it might be a good thing. I think Milner in the in the Liverpool Everton derby, I think it'd be a a great move. Um, you obviously got <clears throat> Robinson as well. Robertson, I just don't think he's the right kind of player for this type of game. Um, he's a little bit inexperienced. Stick Milner in there if Moreno's out. And you always know you're going to get 110% from James Milner. And probably a penalty as well. I, 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 I like <laughs> Amazingly for a DVB, <laughs> uh, you have to listen to the combined uh, 11 <laughs> podcast to find out what that means. Um, I actually have got a bit of time for James Milner. I remember seeing him as a 16-year-old. and He's been around forever. He was incredible. He was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, we were 3-0 up. Sorry, they were 3-0 up in a reserve game. And he just bossed us. Yeah. Now you've got like a, a, like two teams of like fringe players. Nigel Martin was in goal for Leeds. This wow. Time. And then there's James Milner ripping the midfield apart. And I thought this lad's special. And you know how many six hundred appearances, something like that in Premier League. It's hard not to like. Him. It is like. You know. He's the most boring man in Manchester. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> boring James Milner on Twitter is brilliant. Yeah, it, it probably is him as well. You know. <laughs> yeah, apparently he, he doesn't mind it. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't likes mind. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be him. <laughs> no. um, he normally does um he normally does a boring thing like himself at Christmas just to um just to show boring James Miller to it. So it'd be interesting to see what he does this year. What what he's going for on this then? Um I don't know because um I looked at the Asian handicap and the line's at one point five and I'm i I'm too scared to go Everton because the last few times I've done that Liverpool have just gone mm. out and Ripped a team apart, but I'm also conscious this is a derby, so I'm thinking about going for goals. Both teams to score might be the way to go. I think. Mm. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it'll be close. I, I, I don't think it'll be like like one nil or something like that. I think it's more likely to be three mm-hmm. one to Liverpool. You know, I, 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 I don't think it's going to be a boring game. You got to go to over three point five to find out no over even. It's two point two one at the minute. Well, mm. what's both teams to score at the moment? That's probably quite low. I think. It's probably about one, one point six, one point five. That's probably the banker for me. Mm. Right, then. Shall we, right, right. So shall we move on then to the to the big one of the weekend? Uh, second place, Man United, are hosting uh, first place, Manchester City. Is it too early to mention title decider? Is it too early? Is it? Is it? Um, what do you think? I don't think it's, uh, think it's title decider. I, I, don't, I, I don't know about that. No, I, I don't know about that just yet. I wouldn't say decider. I think. If United win it, then City is still in obviously pole position. But if City do win it, then I think Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd go with that. But the thing is, is you got you got the ultra attacking uh, Man City against uh, Jose Mourinho, who's the renegade master. <laughs> for, uh, <Park laughs> <and Cross. laughs> Boom! Had to get that in. Sorry, He's back once again. Yeah, sorry. Um, got a stat for you. Jose Mourinho is undefeated at home on Sunday in the Premier League. 22 wins, 12 draws, 57 goals for, 17 goals against. That's, that's a stat. That's a magic that's incredible. stat, that is. You know, it had nearly... Did it, yeah. 40 nearly, unbeaten at home as well. Uh, it's, it's a, a, kind of it's swing a fortress towards, again. It's a kind of swing towards betting on, on, on Man United then. A stat like that. Because it's mad, it's such a mad I mean, stat. They're missing Pogba, and I think that's a bit of a blow. But Do you know what I was reading today on, on, on uh, one of uh, Betfair's... Um, Blog articles. They were yeah. saying that um, Pogba being out will probably help Man United a lot because it means they'll bring in Herrera, so they'll have Herrera and Matic in the middle of the field, and they'll be able to break up a lot of City's play in the middle, and it'll force them to go wide. And then you have uh, Young and Valencia out wide as well, who can catch them on the break. Then, so the the article was arguing that actually Pogba being out might be a good thing for Man United the way they set up. Mm. Yeah, the good thing is for United, you know, they've got pace. On the wings, so they can track back and yeah, they've Sterling and so they got pace up front as well. Mm. You know, I think you know, Marsh, I think Martial's come back into some sort of form. Rashford scored in midweek. Lukaku scored in midweek. Yeah, you know, so do you reckon Rashford will start? I don't no, think he'll start. No, I, th- I think Rashford will be on the bench. I think 
I think it would be Lukaku. Um, mm. Although, I, I agree with something Paddy's talked about in the past. This isn't the game for Lukaku to score. Lukaku is to batter teams. Yeah, just do your job as a teammate. Yeah, yeah. This, this one, um, he's not so great against the, uh, the, the, the big teams. And I don't know. Um, it's, it's, I, I'd be intrigued to see how Pep sets up as well because, you know, is is three up front going to work against uh, like like you said, you know Valencia and Young as mm. wing backs? You know because you've got he normally plays Sane and Sterling, doesn't he? Who are both quick, yeah, and like to, you know cut inside and 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 get like 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 in shooting positions. But if you've got two wing backs who are pushing them back a little bit, I don't know. I wonder if Pep will look at the um, the game against uh, Southampton where he went too wide. Was mm-hmm. he? No, no, it was West Ham, sorry. We yeah, went too yeah. wide and too up front and changed things slightly into a more orthodox sort of formation just to switch mm-hmm. it up a bit. I wonder if he'll do that. Um, I don't, don't think he'll do it from the, from the off. No, but one thing I like about, Pep, one thing I've liked a lot about Pep this year is he's reactive. He's, um, he's been really good at like assessing the situation. And this is why they've been coming back to win games. Yeah. Because he's been assessing the situation and making those Tiny little tweaks, just to take advantage of something that is noticed in the opposition. Thing is, though, it can't last. Okay, I know, I know they lost against Shakhtar, but we can kind of write that one off because they've been qualified and they they were blooding a couple of new new players, yeah. you know. But, but this thing has has to end because they can't always come back and win in. And why are they calling this Fergie time? It's not Fergie time. Fergie time has to be injury time, doesn't it? Yes. But they're calling this. This yeah. is ridiculous. It's like they're scoring like eighty three minutes, eighty six minutes. So it's not Fergie time. So shut up. And <laughs> like. It, they can't keep doing it, and if you're if they're coming up against Man United, Man United are, are, are Jose Mourinho. He's the best at not allowing teams to play. So I think if it gets to eighty, and I think they're going to break him down. And if it's nil nil or one one or two two all, and I don't know, like I think what will be interesting as well for me is that like like Otamendi made it into our combined eleven team on on that podcast, and I, and I should do it. I actually like him, but I don't like Mangala, and Mangala against. Against Marshall, like who, who are you back in there? Mangala against most Premier League <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I don't rate him, yeah. and I know they're going to get shot because they've got to. He's, he's not good enough. But would they bring Company back in? Because Company's oh, fit. Is, is he fit? Know. Yeah, he was on the bench. He's on the bench last game. Oh, okay. Company and Otamendi at the back, maybe. Oh, so maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's a shame if John Stones is injured because he's had a great start to the season. But yeah. I was just reading a stat here that Otamendi's got the most passes. Completed uh, most passes and most passes completed. Any other Premier League player this season? One thousand two hundred fifty-six skills. No, and he got awful hassle when he came in to the Premier League first. I think he's he's come on leaps and bounds. He's he's decent. The mind games that Pep and Mourinho are playing already with each other. Like Mourinho come out and said that Matic is injured at the moment, but he will play. Yet Pep wouldn't give a straight answer when he got asked about David Silva. I think <laughs> that that role Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. It's, I, it's, it's part of the fun of it, and it's you know as much as people hate Mourinho, you've got to admire his uh, his passion for the dark arts. You know, he, he really is good at getting under the skin of other managers. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good pantomime villain. I don't know if you like, you probably did. We're all close enough to the same age. We, we used to watch WWF growing up. It was always the bad guys you liked the most, you know. I remember like Razor Ram- Ramon. He was a crap wrestler, but he was such a <laughs> badass, you know. And, and, and guys like that. And it's the same with Mourinho. You gotta. No, I don't like him. I don't like him at all. But I like what he does. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I think it's gonna be a good one, lads. You're gonna have to pick. Uh, you're gonna have to tell me what you're going with here now. City to win or Actually, United to win or draws. Down down the middle. What are you going for? I'm. I've not really picked anything, but I think I would go with a draw too. And I, I, if I was gonna lean towards one team, it would be Man U. I think as really? much as. Yeah, because as much as I rate Man City, Mourinho, it's the Mourinho thing, and I, I think if there's one person who is going to stop this Man City hype train in the Premier League, it's going to be Mourinho. Um, you know, there's, there's this wreck, the 40 games record, we didn't talk about it at all. Mm. Well, this will be the 41st game, won't it? Yeah, 41st. Yeah. yeah. So they haven't lost in, mm-hmm. in, in ages. So the draw... Uh, Interesting, oh, just the draw. Yeah, I know you said, obviously, about midweek... Alright, they lost and played like some kids and stuff. I wonder if that's going to affect their mentality a little bit. Gabriel mm-hmm. Jesus' his first loss in a Man City shirt. Well, there you go. You know, I, I his look first up... loss in, sorry, his first loss in any shirt 
since October 2016 playing for Palmeiras. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's nuts. Imagine being that. Yeah, you'd be distraught though, wouldn't you? You'd like, I, I've forgotten what it's like to lose. <laughs> I looked up some stats on the, you know, the Squawker app uh, yeah. that they do where you can compare teams and, um, Goals scored uh, between the two of them, they're not that different. Man United are averaging 2.33 goals. City are averaging 3.07. Okay, there's a bit of a gap. But goals conceded is more or less the same. 0. 0.6 for Man United, 0. 0.67 for uh, City. And shots, 14.07 for United and 18 for City. So there's not all that much between them, really. You know, even though United aren't getting the, the praise that City are. So look, it's going to be a good one. I'm going to throw this out there. I think it would be good for the Premier League if Man, Man United won. Oh, no one's ever said that sentence before. <laughs> no, I don't think they have. I think they've broken new ground. But I think it would be good for the Premier League because it would yeah. drag Man City yeah. back down. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I'm, I don't like these leagues where it's like one or two teams to win the top. I think the reason, for example, that the Premier League have five teams in the Champions League last 16 hmm. is because there are so many teams used to having to play tough games each and every week. Like, if you're Real Madrid, you know, you're playing Barcelona twice a season and then some other teams. <laughs> some so, other teams. You know, you, Juventus are, are trying to win their seventh, eighth mm. Serie A title in a row. That's interesting this season. That I'll give Serie A that. It's interesting again. Yeah. It never used Bayern, to Bayern, um, PSG. Oh, God, yeah, PSG. They so got nobody. It, it's just like, you don't want a hegemony at the top, you know. It, yeah. I, I I really do like the idea. I really but do. But Will, then, on, on, on the subject, then, I was going to bring up later on, of five uh, English teams getting through to the qualifying from the group stages. Like, how far do you actually see them going? Like, if Liverpool... Like, Liverpool could draw PSG. They could draw mm. Bayern Munich. Like, uh, I, I, I wouldn't kinda, fancy I, Liverpool I, I, against them. I've just got them. this weird feeling, five teams in the last 16, zero into the last eight. <laughs> <laughs> that could well happen. I uh, know, nah, Chelsea, Chelsea will do alright, I'd say. Chelsea will get Barcelona. Do you reckon I reckon they get PSG? They've got 43% chance of getting Barcelona. Ah, mm. they? Oh, ouch. Oh, well. But, but if there's a, t- if there's a time to play Barcelona, now is it, I think. If there's a time, to, time to play Real Madrid, now is it. Yeah, I agree. Cause, um, I don't think any Liverpool, uh, not Liverpool, any English side, Liverpool, Chelsea, United, should fit anyone in Europe. I think, uh, at the start of the season, I didn't think it was possible, but now I think an English side could win it. Really Dejan Lovren. Come on, Jimmy Traore won it with Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, he's got a Champions League mega last time, hasn't he? Wow. <laughs> As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast, or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Right then, let's uh, turn towards the championship. Sheffield United are playing. Sheffield United in fourth are playing Bristol City in third. This one uh, looks like it's going to be a cracker of a game. It's on on Friday night. Uh, Martin, did you see that in this one? Um, I was having a look at this earlier, and I actually, you know, on paper I look at this and think, oh, Sheffield United might have the edge, but Sheffield United's recent form is horrendous. Obviously, they lost that unbelievable game to Fulham, drew against you a lot. Um, got smashed by Millwall when I backed them for that, for in that game. And yes, they do have to bounce back, but they're playing a Bristol City side who are just full of confidence. Mm. I really enjoy watching Bristol City this season and I just want to see more gifts. Yeah, I was, <laughs> more gifts. I was, I was <laughs> saying that today. I said that today about the gifts. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about Sheffield United, like, okay, so they lost to Fulham. That was a crazy game. And they should have beaten us. Um, I don't know if you saw that game, but the second half, how we, how we only conceded one goal, I do not know. Um, actually, a stat for you. Um, Birmingham City under Steve Cottrell have not scored a second half goal. <laughs> wow, it just gets worse. For you, well, right? but, but we barely scored a first half goal. So <laughs> <laughs> we scored four in ten games. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah Bristol, Bristol have what? I think yeah. they've won five out of the last five away or four out of the last five away, I yeah. think. So I, 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 I've, really I've gone for goals on this one because I, yeah. I can't really call it, but I think it's going to be a cracker. Yeah, agreed. Because you, you, you look at, as well, you look at Sheffield United, you know, they, they, they lost 5 4 to Fulham, they lost 3 1 to Millwall. You look through Bristol City's results, there's been goals everywhere, so yeah, yeah goals. So cool. Goals is 1.81 yeah. when I looked it up. Um, 
Right then, so we'll move on to some... Uh, no, actually, we'll come back to the European football in a minute because I want to talk about a topic. I've been dying to talk about this all day. This has been <laughs> brilliant since uh, since uh, since Protips or Dan introduced it to me. And 442, uh, the magazine, up on their website, they have a feature, to, and it's uh, the top 50 most hated people in football. And uh, number 10, I have to reveal, number 10, It's it, today is his birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, John Terry. Oh, what? <laughs> Can I tell you, um, with Birmingham City were linked with signing him in the summer and all that. He and I, went to you, didn't he? Nah, it was no. never going to happen. Okay. But I, I was, I, what, I will admit, I was kind of worried for about a day that it would because there are players you just don't want to play for your team. Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know how, how you feel about Terry, but Wait, I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd, I would rather dress up a turd. <laughs> In a Birmingham City shirt than John Terry. I really would. And I know, I know I'm not alone in thinking that. And, and for me, he's gone to the ideal team. The absolute <laughs> perfect team. The team that gave the Nazi salute to Hitler in 1936. <laughs> Brilliant! So what would you have done if he did sign for Birmingham? John Terry and Harry Redknapp, I would have literally taken a year off. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I, I, I was, Miffed enough at Harry Redknapp, but if John Terry had signed, I'd, <laughs> I, 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 I'd, you know, put everything behind Geikers Catter. Yeah. That, that would be neat. <laughs> Number nine was uh, Pete Winkerman. Uh, ruined AFC Wimbledon. Yeah. yeah. So what, what? He's MK Dons now. That's that's his thing. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He, he, he took um, he took Wimbledon to uh, Milton Keynes. Um, mm. I didn't think he'd had that high enough prof- profile to be one of the most hated uh, uh, this, men in football. This is the hipster choice, and to be honest with you, I think it's actually a little bit unfair because um, AFC Wimbledon aren't exactly clean themselves, so they turf Kingstonian out of Kingsmeadow. Yeah, they did actually. And, um, and, and they, 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 they nearly left England. England once as well. They were going to move mm. over to Dublin. The, yeah, that, that, years that, ago. That, yeah, yeah, that, that really? was when before uh, Winkleman. But like oh. AFC Wimbledon were founded, and then they moved they moved out to Kingstonian. Hmm. Bought King's Meadow and told Kingstonian, see ya. See ya. Mm, fair enough. Number eight is El, El Haji Duff, which is totally understandable. Yeah. And uh, number seven, Luciano Moggi from the Calcio Poly scandal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where he was bribing refs. Yeah, uh, yeah. The reason yeah. Juventus lost the Serie A title. Mm. And what well, is it the reason AC Milan never lost any? It was because, um the place where the records were being kept mysteriously went on fire a day before it was going to be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, wow. seriously, yeah, went went on fire a day or two before it was supposed oh, to be inspected. Burn Lascone, burn Lascone, burn Lascone, yeah, dum <laughs> dum. Uh, number six is Ronaldo. I'm surprised that I I'm not. I'm not. He's he's not a likable guy. I I, I think Messi's the likable one. And yeah. Ronaldo's no, the it's the other way. But Messi's see, supposed to be horrible in, 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 in reality when you meet him. Ronaldo's supposed to be alright. Mm. I, I, I personally, sure. I, I, out of the two, I prefer Ronaldo. I think he's, I, I should probably hear to say this, but I think Ronaldo's the better player. No, that's oh, no, no, that's no, for no. another show. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't yeah. hate it. It's not a hatey player for me. Yeah. So. I'm not against them. He's no, a nice lad. Either. He does loads for charity. He looks after his young lads. Alright, he looks like a, Melon, a lot, <laughs> but like, sure, it's whatever. It's just the way he is. You know, you can't hate someone just because of their personality. He's earned the right to be a knob. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever he likes. Number five, I think you're all gonna like. It's uh, Mr. Richard Keys. Yeah, Rich Richard Keys. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get started, Richard Keys? <laughs> and now he's Mr. Troll on the internet as well. Yeah, that's an argument, it's like, what's the point? You know. And uh, number four is Michelle Platini. Uh, I was a little bit surprised at that because he it's was a shame because he was a good player. He was, he was such a great player, players. yeah. Mm. You know, bit of a shame that he's up there so high. Number three was uh, Harold Schumacher. Now the younger fans won't remember him at all. From what World Cup was it? Eighty-two in what Spain. A fine kick, wasn't it? Yeah, and Batisson. And afterwards, um, he, he took the piss because a Batisson like lost teeth and everything, and and he went, "I oh, just getting some crowns." <laughs> like proper, proper hard, hardcore trolling. So he's still hated to this day for just yeah. That but one again, moment. this I think this is four four two being a bit hipster. So, yeah, you know, trying to find someone yeah from the from the past to hate. Uh, number two is Jose Mourinho, which is understandable. He's not a very nice man at all, uh, even though <laughs> I'm a fan of the dark arts, as you'll know uh, from listening. But number one, drum roll, Sepp Blatter. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No surprise there was. Just the, the big surprise we, we, we both came up with was that Stan, Stan Collymore's not in the top Stan 50. Stan Collymore's not in the top 50. And the only reason I can, I can, I think for this is because he's not relevant enough to be in the top 50. <laughs> Either that, or yeah, they just didn't think about him. Yeah. Which is probably the best thing to do with Stan Does he know, still have his talk show? After I don't know, but I'll tell you um, that there is a, uh, a kind of movement on Twitter blocked by Stan Collymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in it with about three accounts. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he, the thing is, is that I've never tweeted him. I've never tweeted him. He's just blocked me because I'm a Birmingham City fan. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. He's done it en masse, the Birmingham City fans. Mm. Admittedly, there's been a few who've taken exception to his, uh, his proclivities, um, yeah. as they were. I think everyone knows what they are. Yeah, but let's um, not go into that. No. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, and and then there's the Dovian thing as well. Oh yeah, of course. So you know, like uh, you know, it's not bad enough being a DVB. <laughs> <laughs> but the best bit is, he wasn't. A, he wasn't. He's a plastic DVB. He was a Wolves fan as a youngster. Wow. You know how how much worse can you get? <laughs> Stan Collymore, bad but human. But then you got Craig Gardner who plays for everyone. Yeah, but Craig Gardner actually was a Birmingham City fan. Was he? Yeah, um, when he was playing for Sunderland, he had a box at our ground. Um, he comes from a mixed family of, um, like his brother's a, brother supports the other mob. Hmm. Um, but he is actually a Blues fan. He was, he was quoted in a, in a pro, he, the, Craig Gardner's problem is he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. And he's a lot, don't get me wrong, he's a lovely guy, he really is a lovely guy, and uh, I've got a lot of time for him, but uh, he's been put under pressure to say things, and he said things that maybe he might regret, you know, like um, when he left us, when we got relegated, he said that he had to look after his family, it was a no-brainer moving to Sunderland, which got a few people's backs up, but the truth of the matter was, they said to him, look mate, you've got to go, we need the money, mm. Sunderland are offering six million for you. A uh, couple of notable mentions. Uh, number 14 was Joey Barton, which I was a bit surprised. I think Joey's done a lot of good for himself by going on telly. He's a pretty good analyst, I think. Well, He's good I'm on, surprised he's in the like. top 10, to be honest. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Joey Barton is the... the he is more my... He's, he's such a hipster as well, like quoting Nietzsche. Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with a bit of Nietzsche? What's wrong with Nietzsche? Give us his best. As I stare into the abyss and... <laughs> Ponder upon the futileness of human existence. Uh, El Diego, Diego Maradona is number 13. Uh, Carl Oyston is number 12. Blackpool, I had to be explained. Uh, uh, Carl, uh, Oyston is, Carl Oyston is... His background is horrendous. I mean, he's, this is a guy who got miffed that fans criticised him online so he sued them. Yeah, that's, that's insane. Which is like, and sued them like all the way through court, bankrupted a couple. Like made them, forced them to apologise, took their money as well. He is a complete... Uh, Mike Ashley 17 and uh, Suarez was uh, number 16 uh, I, I was surprised that the likes of Diego Costa and um, Costa was 15 I think oh was he there I didn't write him down and uh, oh, what's his name Ivory Coast striker for Chelsea uh, Didier Drogba wasn't I didn't see him I either. didn't see Drogba at all in there yeah. why do people hate Drogba I don't know he's a I chief like no he's a chief he might go okay, okay. okay. Sometimes. Arsenal player he's a chief do you hate Thierry Henry of course, I'm Irish. Of course, I hate Thierry Henry. <laughs> <laughs> you troll! You're just doing that to wind me up. <laughs> well, Martin Martin posted a tweet, yeah. and he got like uh, a picture of uh, Henry with who was Anthony it? Anthony Joshua. Yeah. yeah. Got, <laughs> which, which of these men not? Which of these men knocked out a whole country with one, <laughs> one hand? <laughs> Worst thing about that Thierry Henry thing is that loads of people think that he scored. He didn't score. He, he double handballed it, and I think mm. it was Gala scored the goal. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. ProTipster IRL, ProTipster EN, or ProTipster DAN. Or on Facebook at ProTipster UK. Let's talk about our European matches. So Real Madrid in fourth are taking on Seville in fifth. That's on Saturday. So Madrid have a win-win double results. So they won the first half and won the match in 11 out of 18 home matches. That was the only stat I could find that was, was of interest here. Um, what do you think, lads? Seville have just been brilliant since your man said he had prostate cancer, the manager. Yeah, Varane yeah. defensive problems as well. Varane went off injured against Dortmund. Oh, did he? Yeah, so um, I was reading 
They're back four for this game. They could play Marcus uh, uh, Lorente in the back four, but Varane's out. Ramos is uh, suspended. Caravajo is suspended. Casemiro is suspended. <laughs> so you're looking at the back four of um, uh, Hakim, Nacho It's, ama- it's Nandes, amazing to think that a uh, Zinedine Zidane team would have discipline problems. <laughs> yeah, you know? who'd have thunk <laughs> But like the back four is like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not massively okay with Spanish football, but I only recognise mm. Marcelo. Yeah. The other three, I'm yeah. like, who? Wow. And it's like against the severe side, they're pretty good. And yeah, very like, good. And the best bit is the Asian handicap. Real Madrid is still 1.81 minus 1.5, yeah. and yeah. Seville yeah. are above evens plus 1.5. Yeah. I think the value bet of the weekend might be to back Sevilla in the Asian handicap because. Although I think Madrid and Pro- Real will probably win, mm. if they've got like no defence and no Casemiro to protect them either, then they're going to concede. Um, I, here's a stat for you from uh, that, that immersion, that Dortmund game. Mm-hmm. Um, Aubameyang has scored more goals in the Bernabeu this season than Benzema. <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. It's a great stat. <laughs> but it's one of those... I was looking at the head-to-heads and I think the Bernabeu is one of those places that Sevilla just don't like going. Draw one, lost 11. Ugh. In the last 12. Mm. But that's why I said go for the Asian handicap, because mm. then, like, if, if Real only win by one, you got it. Okay. You gotta go to, that. even the goals, you gotta go to over, you gotta bet on four or more goals before you can find a bet that's over evens, and that's oh. at 2.05. So you gotta go really over four and a half goals, and there's not even many better no bookmakers thanks. that do it, that do that. That would, I don't, I don't know what the price for that is, but yeah, I think over four goals. Remember Madrid scraped past Malaga and then they, they drew nil nil with Atletico, drew nil nil with Bilbao, so they're not exactly banging in the goals, no. so that, those odds are terrible. Mm. Terrible odds, yeah. yeah. Maybe they think Sevilla are gonna bang them in because Real have got like, the defense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, last match then uh, for the podcast uh, Juventus in third are playing Inter Milan in first, this is also on Saturday. Juventus have won by two or more goals in eight out of twelve. Home matches, that's the stat I could find for this. What do you think, lads? The only thing I've got written down for this is Dybala struggling. Dybala really? struggling? Yeah, it's oh, easy. Well, he's struggling for form, isn't it? Oh, I thought you meant struggling for an injury. No, he's struggling for form. What, mm. what was it he said about um, football being hard? Yeah, he said he's a bit, kind of, it's kind of a lonely game. Because he said so the quote is something, I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something mm. like, when you're playing and the ball's at your feet, you're, you're as happy as you can be. But a lot of times the football life is very solitary, so I feel a bit sorry for him. He misses, he misses home. Yeah, he just sounds like misses his, his mammy. Yeah, you know? he needs a cuddle. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing I've got written down is that Inter have um, massively improved under Spalletti this season. Yeah, they have. Last year they were a bit all over the shop. Like mm. They had three different managers, didn't they, last year? Spalletti's so, brilliant, man. If, if Totti had a gotten out of the way earlier and just let Spalletti do what he does... Roma, Roma probably would have won the championship by now, you know. It's, 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 it's yeah, I blame Totti for that as much as <laughs> Totti's a legend, but like, ah, uh, no sentimentality in football, unfortunately. You can't afford to. No. Yeah. Um. You know. Yeah. You know. Totti's a legend, and like, you, it's, it's. But you, there comes a time when, like, I think, I think it's really hard. The players have to say, "I can't do this anymore." Mm-hmm. That's like us persevering with Mark Noble every season. <laughs> it's like us pers- Well, up, up until. This season, personally, with Paul Robinson. Paul Robinson, as far as he's concerned, is still a top, top professional. Mm. But um, he's he's six months younger, sorry, ten months younger than me, and about as slow, <laughs> and maybe about as <laughs> big. I don't know. <laughs> I looked as well at some stats on this. The goal, goals scored, uh, Juventus are averaging two point six, Inter is two point two, uh, goals conceded point eight seven and point six seven respectively, and shots fourteen point seven three and sixteen point four. So the very, very even. Um, it's just one of those for it's me. Tough to call, isn't it? It's tough to call. Just looking at the last three um, meetings between sides at Inchirin, one 0 Juve, two 0 Juve, three 0 Juve. So they keep it tight um, against the big guns at home. Yeah, it's that and, kind of experience. An example from last week. Mm. We, everyone thought Napoli were going to beat them, but they they just ground out the victory and. Yeah. We should ask, we should ask, um, pro, t- uh, pro t- to Italy. Marco. Marco is who's, who's, uh, who's here to, who's here, also here in Poland over the weekend, who is a massive internationale fan, what he thinks. Yeah. You, you won't, you know, don't let him in there, cause I'm after, I'm after picking Juve in one of our videos. <laughs> so we'll say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think the sensible money will be on a Juve home win. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, they're not great odds though. It's 1.71. I would be tempted by the draw. 
because Internazionale are the only unbeaten team left in Serie A. Until this weekend. Until this yeah. weekend. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I don't know. I'd be tempted. Because yeah. I looked at the line. The line's at 0. 0.75. Yeah. So may, maybe Internazionale uh, plus not 0. 0.5. Maybe you get, like, you probably mm. get well above even to that. Mm. Might be. But the thing is, as, as Paddy said, like in um, the previous video, uh, the, the video, uh, the betting video that we do, you may have got this real knack of like closing out teams being really, you know, yeah. against Napoli they showed it they're experienced. You know, okay, that they lost um, uh, Bonucci. Yeah. Uh, but then they got Benassi in, in who's, uh-huh. who's really slotted in and yeah. they've, just, they've just got that skill, haven't they, of like just ju- shutting down the opposition, mm. taking, you know, grinding, grinding out the wins. And, and the, it's mm. the mark of a great team. A great team isn't a team that goes out and wins three, four nil every couple of weeks. A great yeah. team's one that can play not great and still win and still grind it out. And yeah, yeah and they can, they, they can even team. afford like the Bala to have this bit of bad form and he'll still keep his pace. It's fine because they know he'll come good. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's insane just how, how how good they are. Um, right, lads. I suppose we'll, we'll, we'll finish up then. Uh, we'll do our Twitter reminders. Dan, if you can tell us where you are on the internet, please. Swipe right on Tinder. Oy. Never gets <laughs> old. Never gets old. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Protect the Dan, all one word. I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Protect the Dan, all one word. Um, yeah. Um, come find me and tell me my tips are crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martin, where can we find you on this? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I run Protips to EN. I've also got a personal Twitter at Protips to M. If you want to give me some abuse, please do so. <laughs> and on Facebook at Pro Tipster Martin, three separate words. You can find me on Twitter as well, Pro Tipster IRL. You can subscribe to the Pro Tipster Show on iTunes. We're on Android Podcatchers as well. Yes, that's a new word I learned today, and I have to tell you that twice. I'm so proud of myself. So give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, and you can also listen on the Pro Tipster blog as well. Make sure and check out protipster.com for some amazing football tips and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily videos, previews, podcasts and strategy videos. Great. Well, look, enjoy the weekend. We're off to have our Christmas party. Woo! Speak to you on Monday. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are protipsterglobal or get in touch on Twitter. Pro Tipster E-N or Pro Tipster I-R-L. Bye.